Kids Search Kids Online. Online. I'm Ola. And I'm Jimmy. Today we're going to be talking about the communion and Jesus' Last Supper. But that will be after a time of worship. Let's share this special meal, my friends, for this will be our last time together. We're going to use the next few weeks to remember and celebrate the death, burial and resurrection of our Lord and our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lots and lots of things happened to the lead up and during this period. Let me ask you something. Do you eat regularly? with members of your family or with friends? Do you like to have dinner with people? There are some people who think, oh, it's not very necessary. And some people who do it normally just take it for granted. That is eating together with people. I'll have you know that eating meals together with people is a very, very good and important thing. Now, having meals together could be just sitting and eating together. Maybe in the evening, uh, you come together with your family and have your meal. Or it could be in a celebration of something, like maybe there's a new baby in the family, or somebody has passed their driving test, or someone's going off to college or university. Or somebody may have won an important prize. 
there are many reasons why people come together to have a meal. And did you know that eating together makes you a more friendly person? It makes you kind and confident and so many other things. Special dinners, special meals help us to remember special occasions. And today we are going to talk about remembering. Now, there are some important festivals that the Israelites used to have. These festivals were celebrations for one thing or the other. But there was one particular one that I want to talk about today, and that is the festival in which the Passover meal is eaten. Years and years and years ago, the Hebrews were in Egypt as slaves and they were able to escape that slavery. That story is for another day. Coming back to today, the festival is a celebration remembering how good and powerful God was when he freed them in a mighty way from slavery in Egypt. It also is a festival that celebrates the birth of Israel and the freedom of the Israelites. Initially, they were just called Hebrews, but when they came out of Egypt, they now became Israelites. So this festival that I'm talking about is the festival in which the Passover meal is eaten. And everything, every item in that Passover meal has a meaning. It's a festival that takes place in spring, round about the same time that we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When Jesus spoke to people, he spoke to them in such a way that they would understand what he was talking about by him giving examples of things that were normal to them. Let me give you an example. If I say, I've got a big lump on my forehead, it's about seven by five by three centimeters. You would now be thinking, what's she talking about? But if I say I have got a lump on my forehead as big as an orange, you would understand that because almost everybody knows what an orange is. And that is exactly how Jesus used to speak to people. He used to speak in a way that people would be able to identify and understand things. So, as I said, in this particular case, we are talking about that Passover meal. Every single item in that meal was important. It had a meaning. It was understood. And Jesus took two elements out of this Passover meal, that is bread and wine, to describe and explain what was going to happen to him and how we should remember him. So that's where the story from the Bible comes. This story appears in most of the Gospels in the New Testament. So it was about the time for the festival of unleavened bread. Unleavened bread means that it's bread that no yeast has been put in. So it's a flat bread. So it was the festival of the unleavened bread. When the Passover lamb is sacrificed and they have the Passover dinner, so Jesus sent two of his disciples, Peter and John, to go and prepare 
for the Passover meal that all of them, that's Jesus and his 12 disciples, were going to eat together. He gave them instructions to go into Jerusalem and follow someone carrying a pitcher of water to the house or to a house. And when they got to that house, they were to ask the owner of the house for a room where, that they can use to prepare for the Passover meal. They did exactly what Jesus had asked. Jesus really, really, really wanted to eat this particular Passover meal with them. So he was eager to eat this Passover meal with them before his suffering began. So the night he was betrayed, he had this special dinner with his disciples called the Passover dinner. He took some bread and gave God thanks for it. And then he broke it up into pieces and handed those pieces out to his 12 disciples and said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God for it and said that this is the cup of the new covenant that is the new agreement between God and his people. It is an agreement confirmed by my blood, poured out as a sacrifice for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this wine, you should remember me. So this dinner, this Passover dinner, was a dinner to remember Jesus Christ, for his disciples to remember him, and for us too, who also do the same thing, to remember him. And we call this the communion. We call it what? The communion. It tells us how Jesus' body was going to be broken for our sakes. It also tells us how Jesus' blood was going to be spilt for our sakes. It is a sacrifice he made for us. He dies on our behalf. All this sounds really sad and horrible. Why do we even have to be talking about the death of someone? But in this particular case, we need to remember that Jesus, he didn't stay dead. But we do need to remember what he did. Don't forget, you can have a communion meal with your family, with your friends. And that's the end of the story. Hi everybody. Look, do you like my drawing of the Last Supper? And we're going to make these to help us remember, but also by doing this, we are following in a tradition and the footsteps of some of the greatest artists in the world who have painted this scene as well. And you can see ours is also a pop-up. So, for this, to begin with, you need a piece of A4 paper and fold it longwise in half. Then have it with the fold up towards you and take your ruler and oops, measure off five centimetres at one end and have the middle of the ruler along the fold and draw along and leave five centimetres at the other end. Okay, so you'll have a line along like this and then turn the paper over and do exactly the same on the other side. So we're measuring in five centimetres from the edge and with our ruler along the central fold, we're going to draw along and we're going to leave five centimetres at the other side. Then we're going to draw, join those lines up and this 
is giving us the outline of our table. So then the next thing we're going to do is start drawing in some of the detail. So we're going to draw the bottom of the tablecloth, just a wavy line along there, and we're going to draw in the table legs. And then we're going to start drawing in the plate on the table. So we need one for Jesus. Here we go, in the middle at the back. And then we need 12 for the disciples. So we'll just do three on each side there. And for the plates, I'm just drawing an oval. Now, I'm being a bit fast. You can be a bit more careful with yours. And then we'll do three opposite. And make sure all of these are coming above your fold line. Okay, so here are our 12 plates plus one for Jesus. And then in the middle here, we'll draw in our plate of food. So that's my roast lamb. That's what they would have had. I don't really know what it looked like. And then if you want to, you can also draw in a cup for everybody. And to do that, you just draw two diagonal lines up with a little oval at the top, join it up at the bottom. The next thing is to start to draw in the people. And to get everybody in, to begin with, we're just going to draw in the heads. So what you want to do is draw these head shapes and some of them give a point at the bottom to be a beard and some of them just make round, okay? So we've got Jesus in the middle and then three disciples on each side. And in a moment, we'll draw in the other ones peeping through all the gaps at the back. Once you've got the heads, then you can start to draw in neck and shoulders for everybody. And for Jesus, it's gonna be slightly different because he's gonna be holding the cup in his hand. So for him, you'll draw a normal head and shoulder on one side. And then for the other side, you're going to have his arm coming up so it's overlapping the front of the table and we'll draw the special kind of chalice cup in his hand. I don't know if that's what the cup would have looked like. I guess archaeologists know because that's how we always think of it, isn't it? But there we go. So we'll have Jesus holding the cup and all the others heads drawn in at the front. And then you can see I'm starting to put in the heads at the back. So just in between each of the other disciples we'll add in another one and we'll end up with 12 of them oops some of my heads are coming out a bit of a funny shape but you again can be more careful good once you've got them all drawn in you're then going to start drawing in the faces now the easiest way is to start by drawing in the nose okay so the nose is We'll have pointing towards Jesus, okay, this is in the middle. Then putting in two dots for eyes. And then a mouth for everybody. There we go. Oops. And then for, I'll put in Jesus as once. For those of them who've got a beard, what you want to do is just do a line up on either side, coming up to the nose. So that's the line of their beard okay we'll skip on to this one and then what you want to do is start putting in their hair and some of them you'll give quite long hair because some people in those days had longer hair i think and others you give short hair okay what the famous artists who used to paint pictures like this did was they would draw in pictures of people they knew sometimes so you can make it look like some of your friends and family are there eating with Jesus. Good. Once you've got all of that drawn in, all the people drawn in, then we can start to colour it in. And here's one I forgot to colour. First of all, you want to take a nice kind of pale brown and colour in all the plates so that they look like they're made of earthenware or wood. And then a similar colour is actually quite good for the skin tones, we're going for a nice warm brown, but there would have been people of different races, so then you can start to colour in some of them maybe a bit darker. And then likewise for hair, for most of them in that part of the world, I think they would have had quite dark brown, so you want to be doing their hair, and for everybody who's got a beard, make sure the beard is the same colour as the hair. Okay, and then, oh, I've got a few beards I've left blank here, let's fill those in. And then 
you can start to colour in their clothes. Now, I think it looks nice to have some different colours, but don't make any of them too bright because they wouldn't have had the same synthetic dyes that we have nowadays. It would all have been natural things, but it's nice, I think, to have a range of blues, browns, kind of browny, orangey, reddy colours. So just a nice variety of colours, but none of them coming out too bright. And then once you've got them all coloured in, you can start to add in some details. You can see I've put some extra bowls on the table for the different sources. I've put a sort of swirly line along the edge of the tablecloth and I've written the Last Supper at the top. And then the final thing that we need to do is cut out our pop-up. So fold your piece of paper in half again and you're going to cut along the two edges of your table. Okay, and so that will give you this, these flaps here. And then what you want to do is fold those ones at each side backwards, fold the middle one forwards, and then you kind of find this out when you try to set it up, which bits need to be folded which way. Okay, to give you, here we are, oops, that should be going back to give you your table set up. So there we have it, a picture of the Last Supper to help you remember, just like Jesus said, well, I hope you enjoy some special meals with your family this Easter time, and I will be back next week with another craft. Till then, bye for now. Communion, it means sharing, but in this case, it means sharing bread and wine set apart to remember Jesus. Yes, it's so easy to forget someone that doesn't seem to be around. But when you do things, especially when you're doing with others, it keeps the person alive. The Israelites at the Passover meal to remember how good and powerful God is. Yes, God is good and powerful and even remembering how they were set free from the bondage of slavery from the Egyptians makes us also remember that we too have been set free from the bondage of sin when we share the communion. This is serious stuff. I'm not sure I've ever heard the communion explained like this before. I just thought we ate bread and drank grape juice just for the sake of it. But now, I think I'm getting the meaning of it. Yes, Jamie, it is serious stuff, but in a good way. I like how we're told that eating meals together doesn't only make us remember things, but makes us more friendly, kind and confident. Those are nice things to know too. That's it for this week. Till next time. Bye. bye.